hot potato. Twenty-nine? 1.5. We're just downstream of hope on what we call the heart of the Fraser. The heart of the Fraser runs from hope to mission. It's one of the most productive stretches of river anywhere in the world in that it sustains almost 30 species of fish. It's a migration corridor for millions of fish and it's important rearing habitat for millions of fish as well. Prickly sculpin. A Chinook. It's a larval form of a lamprey. Catastomus. Macrocalius, 39 centimeters, also <laughs> known scale. as the large scale sucker. It sustains British Columbia's largest single spawning run of salmon, and that's the 20 million pink salmon that'll spawn in here every second year. Here we have the uh, jaw of the salmon, it looks like a male. My name's Dr. Marvin Rose now. I just want to tell you about this really amazing cycle that occurs on the heart of the Fraser, and it's salmon related. Little guys go out to the sea, they pack on all this food, all these nutrients, they come back, and then they fertilize this ecosystem. And all of the fertilizer, the nitrogen and phosphorus, seeps into the soil, into the gravel, and the bacteria and the uh, algae pick it up and use it, and the insects forage on the algae, and then the fish forage on the insects and then the bigger fish forage on the little fish. So there's this great big cycle that uh, continues onwards. This is a marvelous kind of a natural fertilization. It's like a great big battery and every year, in the case of pink salmon, which come back every other year uh, on the Fraser, uh, that big battery gets juiced up again and the ecosystem flourishes. Uh, at the same time, given its proximity to Greater Vancouver, it's under great development pressure. Things like urbanization, industrial development, agricultural expansion. So there's a real effort to protect it while we still can. The Heart of the Fraser Conservation Campaign uh, is something we're really excited about. We're working with groups like the Rivers Institute, like the Nature Trust of British Columbia. We're trying to acquire and protect key private lands. We're trying to promote the importance of a collaborative plan for the area. We're trying to create a greater public awareness as to just how important it is. But another key element is the applied research component. It's an incredible living laboratory for BCIT students. So to do this kind of work, not only is it very valuable from our perspective, from an applied research perspective, but it presents an amazing learning opportunity for young people. Such a fantastic learning experience and being able to Contribute to a study like this is fantastic. If we can improve the habitat for the salmonids, it would be fantastic. This is an artificial pond that we're assessing as habitat for overwintering fish. And what we're doing here is just trying to assess how effective it actually is at keeping the fish healthy and alive through the colder months of the year. Oh. I would say it's teeming, teeming with salmon. Sometimes people see small bodies of water like the pond behind me and, and they tend to write them off. They tend to assume they're not that important from a fisheries perspective. But in fact, bodies of water like this hold lots of fish. They are incredibly important. And there are dozens if not hundreds of these up and down the heart of the Fraser. It's really a jewel right next door to Vancouver. So I think we have to do everything we can to ensure that we protect this area, not only for the current generation, but for future generations. It is one of the most special sections of river you'll find anywhere on the planet.